Okay, we have a rare collection here. All three Americas Players of the Year, Women's Basketball at Binghamton. We'll introduce them. First of all, Sarah Cartmill from Bayard College. She's the head coach, 2002 Player of the Year. In the lower right corner, Monty Watkins, 2008 Team Player of the Year. She's in North Carolina. And Kai Moon, the freshly minted 2020 Americas Player of the Year, back home in Illinois. Everybody, uh, first of all, thank you very much for joining us. Be here, David. Well, all three of you have been involved in basketball. It kind of got disrupted. Uh, let's talk about um, how you guys, you know, as coach and players have dealt with the um, recent disruption from COVID-19. So, Sarah, why don't we start with you? Um, first of all, I have to, I have to uh, correct you. I'm at Fredonia State now, but I'll, I'll let that one go. Okay. Um, first of all, the, uh, we were actually very lucky um, being, you know, our season was actually over when, when everything happened. Um, but, you know, recruiting has been affected, not being able to be out and uh, be recruiting uh, student athletes. And obviously our, our student athletes have been affected and being in touch with them through the end of the semester, um, distance learning. But everyone's healthy, everyone's doing well, so we're, we're getting by. Amani, you were over in Turkey playing and your season had to get cut short. Greece. Was that a, um, I was in Greece. Oh boy, I'm sorry. I'm glad I knew where Kai was this year, but you were overseas. <laughs> All right, Amani, you were overseas. What was the process like coming home from? Uh, in um, I want to say we had a game on Sunday, and then um, we were off Monday. So Tuesday, when we came in for practice, um, we had lift and practice, and then after that, our coach told us that they were suspending um, the league as of you know that particular date. So um, Tuesday, no practice Wednesday, no practice Thursday. And then that's when we found out about the travel ban. So a lot of us were scrambling, trying to um, figure out how we were going to get home before the ban took effect, um, just because we didn't really know how it would um, affect us, uh, especially being in you know whatever country. So um, myself and two other uh, people that I know were in that league in Greece as well that live in um, Greensboro, High Point area. Um, so we were all frantic, trying to figure out how we were going to get home. Um, the flight situation was crazy. Uh, trying to get in contact with anybody, you know, um, to get to get a flight was ridiculous. But I ended up finding one on some random website. Um, so I came, I went from Greece to Istanbul, Turkey, to Boston, to Raleigh. Um, and I think that whole process took about 25 hours to, to get back. Now you're on the Binghamton campus. You guys were preparing for the uh, WBI tournament, which you probably would have gotten the bid for. What was the process like for you? Um, so, yeah, we had a few days off um, after our Stony Brook loss. And then um, we had come back. We were on our second day of practice. And then um, we found out in the middle of practice that the WBI had decided to cancel um, the tournament amidst all the coronavirus um, health issues and things like that. So we finished the practice out. The coaches um, knew before we did, um, and they made it a fun practice for us towards the end once they knew that, you know, we weren't practicing towards, you know, a WBI championship or anything like that. So it was nice to be able to still have that practice with the team to do some fun drills, shooting drills, and things that you probably wouldn't be able to do over the course of a season. So I was grateful for that. But um, yeah, it was hard to get the news and knowing that our season was, you know, effectively over at that point. Let's switch to uh, more pleasant memories. Each one of you was named the player of the year during a pretty special year. Uh, we'll start with um, Sarah, 2002, first year as a D1 program, 19 and 9. You were the um, Americas player. What was that year like for the team and how special was that? Um, it was special. I, I think you touched on, I mean, being the first year of division one, really, uh, we went into it kind of with a chip on our shoulder, wanting to prove ourselves that we belonged, um, at that level. Um, so I think, I mean, the success that we had was, was great. Um, and being, being my senior year, obviously, as the girls know, it, it just takes on a whole new, um, specialness, uh, of having your season end that way. Um, unfortunately, we didn't end up doing, we lost in the first round of the playoffs, but um, you know, I think having the culmination of making it to the playoffs in the first year of our, our division one existence was, was big for a bunch of kids that got recruited to play 
D3, D2. Um, so it was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, being named player of the year was a great honor, um, a wonderful way to end uh, my career. But as a team, it was just, it was special all, all, all the way around, um, you know, beating teams and, and being able to be in the conference full, full members was, was a lot of fun. Great. Amani, when you were player of the year in 2018, it was really the culmination of four years of building the program. What was that uh, senior year like for you guys, 20 and 12 and going to the WBI second round? Um, I think, you know, like Sarah said, you, we went into that season with a chip on our shoulder. We kind of knew that um, it was the last round for, um, for me and the list. Um, so I think we just really tried to focus on putting everything together and staying together. Um, I think that 20th win was really big for us. We were really excited. Um, but it was just a really fun season. Um, a lot of ups and downs, but I think a culmination of just hard work and, and perseverance for everyone. Kai, you guys went 22 and nine this year. I assume you had a chip on your shoulder too, but what was this year like for you guys overall? Um, you know, this year, I think there was a lot of uncertainty just given the fact that, um, you know, we lost Rebecca, who was an all-conference player, and it didn't seem, it wasn't somebody right away um, that we knew could fill, you know, the void that she had left. And I think, you know, for me, Carly and KK, we really wanted to go out um, on, on a good note for this year. And then to start off 9-0, and I think, was incredibly special. Um, but it was a great year and to, for, you know, the freshmen to come in as I think the largest class since my class um, and, and contribute right away, I think was, was amazing. And as the season progressed, um, you know, I wanted to have a 21 season. That was my goal. And then once we had had a lot of success, it was, I want this season and this team to have the all-time record in Binghamton. And I think that's probably one of the, the key records that I'm most proud of. Um, and I think overall it was an incredible season. All right, let's switch to when you found out you were the players of the year. Uh, Sarah, 2002, um, the first ever awards bank, you guys. What was it like when you uh, found out you were named player of the year? What was your immediate reaction? Well, I think, I, I think my, uh, my experience was a little different than these guys. Um, I didn't get a heads up. Uh, so, you know, mm -hmm you're sitting there and you're sitting at the table with your teammates and they're like, all right, here are the nominees. I don't even know if they were nominees. I honestly don't remember. I think they just flashed up and the player of the year is <laughs> sitting there and you're like, Oh yeah. So I didn't have prep time. There was no time to write a speech. There was nothing. Um, David O'Brien knew about it and my coaches knew about it, but I didn't know about it. Um, that was a shot. I honestly won't ever forget that because I, the first thing I'm like, Oh my God. Second thing. Oh my God. I have to get up there and talk right now. So, um, I was obviously honored. I was floored. I, it wasn't even in my brain that that would happen. Um, so I stumbled some words together, I think, and, um, you know, made it, made it through, but it was, it shock would be the, the, the most, the best word probably to describe it. I have a confession. I didn't even tell your coaches. I wasn't even sure I was supposed to. Oh, all right. Well, good for wow. you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Amani, uh, things were a little different with you because 16 years later, I knew I could at least share with your coach. But uh, what was it like the moment that you found out? Um, I think I was uh, I was sitting in my apartment and um, I was talking to Coach Sim through text. And she kind of asked me, you know, did I want to know one way or the other? And I was like, you know, hoping that I would get it. But either way, I didn't really want to be blindsided. Um, so she text me and told me and I think it was a relief um because you work and you work and you know you try to build every year so once I found out I got it it was it was definitely a relief but it was short-lived because you know you got the tournament coming up and then obviously you went to the WBI so you're trying um to do you know so much even after you get that award but definitely was a feeling of relief and I had time to write my speech and 10 minutes before we had to be downstairs, I was looking at a blank piece of paper. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, I definitely went up there and kind of, I don't know, I put something together. Apparently it was really good, but definitely was not thought out at all. I don't remember, so it probably wasn't. 
Now, Monty, how, how special was it? <laughs> it's only so it, was um, it was a great, that was a really good speech. I think somebody was crying, actually. There were a lot of, there were no dry eyes in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Amani, how special agree. was it for you that same year that you were player of the year, Alyssa James, three-peated as defensive player of the year? How special was it to know that you were going up there with her? There is, you can't put a, a value on a teammate like Alyssa because she just does so many intangible things. But I think it was special for us because, you know, after uh, she sat out that first year, her second year, we really kind of, you know, put started to put stuff together. And um, for us to go out like that, I think it was really special. Um, yeah, I don't think that's something we'll ever forget, you know. And obviously with all of us being really close, um, it's something that we hold in high esteem. Okay, Kai, there was no banquet for your um, player, but just take us through the process of how you found out. Um, so I was I was on my way to campus uh, to do uh, like a promotional video for our the playoff game that we had that we were going to host at home, and I got a call from Coach Ord to come to her office. She had something to tell me, and um, I remember getting down there and. Uh, she told me that I got player of the week, which was, I was happy about that. Um, but I think I was just in the back of my mind thinking like, I have to go do this promotional video and walk around campus. So I was more so focused on that. Um, and then, you know, she just let me know in a, an excited way that I got player of the year. So all the coaching staff was in there. I thought I was in trouble when I first got there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was thinking about everything that I had done that probably could have gotten me in trouble. Um, so when she said that, I was definitely relieved that I'd gotten the award, that I wasn't in trouble. Um, <laughs> and I honestly didn't know if I would get it. Um, I think ESPN had come out with an article listing, you know, the top candidates for player of the year, and I wasn't. It wasn't me. So, um, you know, I was definitely humbled and, and grateful and uh, he called my parents on the phone um, while I was there. So I got to see their reactions as well. So that was really cool. You remember when I told you that article was trash? Oh, you sent me the article? Was it you? Okay, then two people must have sent me the article because I think somebody was like, uh, it's looking kind of iffy for you. I don't know. I but told you that, that article was trash. I have no comment. <laughs> okay. Well, great. You know, uh, next question I have, the three of you all had coaches that really uh, succeeded at Binghamton and really uh, helped you a lot. So we'll go along the horn. Uh, Sarah, talk about the coaches and how they helped you at Binghamton. Um, I mean, now that I'm in the coaching profession, I think I really appreciate what I had a little bit more because um, I, I kind of understand how much goes into it and the uh, blood, sweat and tears, if you will, on the coaching end. But um, coach Lori Kelly was my coach, um, and she was a post player in college. So that really helped me. She really, she knew what it took. Um, she pushed me. She, she knew, um, she knew I could be pushed and she knew I could go harder than sometimes I went. I think if you told her now, I wasn't really a practice player. I was a gamer. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes you get mad at that. Um, but she was great. The whole staff, coach Connor or coach Shaw, um, they all really, we had a really great, um, group of coaches that both pushed us, but they also, we had a blast. We had a lot of fun. Um, and we, we, you know, like I said, long bus trips and, and long road trips are made easier when you respect your coaches and, you know, they care about you. Um, I'm still in touch with all of them today. And, and that means a lot to me. How about you, Imani? Um, a lot of people don't know Coach Sim and I really had a rocky start, you know, when I got to campus, um, we had a difference in view on a lot of things. But I think the older I got, um, the more we kind of talked and we communicated better. And I matured, and I think she matured in, you know, our relationship. So by the time I was a senior, we had a really strong connection. Um, there was nothing that I couldn't talk to her about, you know, basketball or otherwise. Um, so I think that in itself was something special because – I know, you know, the way things started for us. Um, but even, you know, with our assistant coaches, they did a, an amazing job pushing us in practice. Um, I think we might have one of the best practice squads in the country. You know, they pushed us. And um, I think 
that our scouts, and like you said, you know, once you enter the coaching world, you really realize, like, it's a lot that goes into to that stuff. So when I think back on how detailed our scouts were and how much time and effort they put into those, I think that's one thing that I can always say. We were very well prepared when it came to, you know, scouting other teams and um, making sure that we got everything on paper, on film, and then to execute it um, on the floor. But I think, you know, throughout our four years, our coaching staff kind of fluctuated with everybody that, that came in and really um, brought in their own personality and really um, really gave something to the program. How about you, Kai? Uh, yeah, so um, I had two coaches in my time here. So obviously I came in with Coach Sim and um, as a freshman coming in and not knowing exactly what my freshman year would be like, just hoping to get playing time and then um, getting that starting spot right away. Um, there was a lot of expectations that came with, with me being the point guard spot and, and knowing how to facilitate an offense with, you know, I was surrounded by very talented upperclassmen. So, um, you know, Coach Sim is definitely probably one of the toughest coaches I've had. And I think from a mental standpoint, I think she uh, helped get me to uh, the level that I needed to be at for, for college basketball. Um, so in those two years of having that, I think it helped prepare me for what I would need junior and senior year. So when Coach Ord came, I think there was still a lot of uncertainty because I didn't know how she would want to use me as a player. And um, in the you know early conversations we had, she still recognized me as um, you know a, a crucial and key leader of the team. Um, and her expectations for me were were just as high, if not higher. Um, so, you know, I think practices were just as tough, if not maybe a little bit harder, but I think I was prepared for those because of Coach Sim. And I think my role just changed. So it was more so like, you're a leader now. How do I help mold you into a leader um, for this team? And um, I didn't play that much my junior year because I got hurt. So it was learning to lead in other ways than just playing. Um, once my senior year came around, I feel like I had all the experiences and all the tools that I would need to help move my team in the right direction for senior year. And, and the investment that they both made in me, I think, helped make me a better player. And the expectations that they had for me as well um, allowed me to strive for higher goals. So, um, you know, both of them and having them as my coaches and leaders, um, I think, allowed for my experience as a basketball player to be really great. You know, there's a little difference between the years we play, but you certainly have either seen each other play or been aware of each other. So I want to ask each of you your thoughts and impressions and what you respect most about the others. So Sarah, we'll start with you. You actually initially were the one who recruited uh, Amani, if I'm not mistaken. And right. you've obviously watched her and Kai, but uh, what most impressed you about the Amani and Kai as players? Um, you need to switch up the order. I feel like I get the easy, I get to answer the question first every time, but I'm okay with that. Um, you, you said it nicely. There's a little bit of a difference in years of when we play. That's nicely put. <laughs> appreciate that. Um, I, I think with both of, both of these guys, um, and I was able to watch quite a, quite a bit of both of them, thankfully with the ESPN, um, streaming, but you guys both have the ability to to take over and, and, you know, sense that moment in a game when your team needs you. And, um, you know, when you're, you kind of say it without saying it, like, guys, I got this, I got it. We're good. Um, and I think that's, you know, being able to create shots for yourself, create shots for your teammates um, and just soak in that big moment effect that both of you had. Um, and you are both extremely fun to watch. Um, I'm, I'm, happy that I had a small little bit of, of, um, of way in getting him honey to campus. Um, and, you know, Kai, I actually remember when Leah was on staff when they were recruiting you and she was like, yeah, we're going out and get this kid. She, she's really good. And we got to go out there and we're going to, we're going to try and get her. And I'm like, all right, good luck. Like, you know, she was so, <laughs> about you. so, um, you know, I've, I've been, it's been a blast watching both of you play. Okay, Monty, go ahead. Um, obviously, I didn't get to, you know, see Sarah play or anything like that. But um, your name is all over the record book. So that, to me, 
said that you know you had a huge impact on on the on the program. Um, you guys seen that interview Michael Jordan did when um, they were asking him who he would want to play one on one, and the only person he was worried about beating him was Kobe because he still all his moves. That's Kai. <laughs> Steals all my moves, all of them. No, but um, I enjoy playing with her. Um, she's a sponge, and she literally soaks up everything, whether it's physical, whether it's mental. Um, she soaks up everything. She listens. Um, she's a little stubborn at times, but I think watching her play without me being around and being on the floor was special because you really get to watch, you know, a person grow from you know the time she came in as uh, on her visit um i remember on her visit she was um shy she didn't say much didn't really shoot the ball much and then she got on campus and um you know we really had to let her know like you this is your show um and even though you're young when you step on the floor there's no age you know everybody's out here to play and i think she really did a good job you know her freshman year stepping into um some really big shoes um, and then, you know, she made her own way. And as a senior, watching the vocal leadership and the emotional leadership, I think that was really special because that's not something we see out of Kai off. She's not, you know, emotional. So to watch that was special because it was just, you know, her putting everything together and to lead a program the way she did, you know, for two years um, without a, me and Alyssa, because I think at times, um, we were shadows. So we kind of overshadowed everyone else. Um, but I think when you are able to come out of that and emerge and be your own person and really show how much you've grown, that's special. Okay, Kai, you're up. Uh, well, thank you for that. That was really nice. Uh, <laughs> Don't tell anybody I said that. <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, so, and, and similar to what Amani said, I didn't get to see Sarah play, you know, a ton. I'd seen the name in the locker room and uh, talking to Coach Bowers, uh, who was on staff my first two years. Uh, I knew about Sarah and uh, the legacy that she had left in her time at Binghamton um, and, and going to all the, the camps and seeing Sarah interact with everybody. Um, you know, I knew that she had left a big impact in Binghamton. So I, I had a lot of respect for her from, from that perspective. Um, and then Amani, coming in my first two years, um, I think because I didn't know her as well when I first got there, and the first thing I noticed about her was um, how serious she was about basketball. And um, I guess one could even say intimidating a little bit. She had very high expectations for, for everybody on the team and uh, as soon as she had them for herself. So uh, when she took me under her wing my freshman year, um, I got to know her from a different, um, I guess, perspective and, and where she was coming from and, and aspects of life and in basketball and why she is the way that she is. Um, and she taught me a lot. And I think uh, if I didn't have her to, to talk with and to give advice or get advice from, excuse me. Um, I don't know how much I would have been able to handle when I became, I guess, that player in her shoes um, in my junior and senior year. And I think um, that time of my junior year was nerve wracking and I think a little bit scary just because I knew that people would expect for me to fill that void that she had left. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it or not. Um, and I think I kind of had to take everything that she had taught me and know that I wasn't going to be exactly the player that she was, but I'd have to create who I was in my own right. So she helped me with that. And I took a lot of things from her and I was able to, um, you know, create, to create my own legacy and, and create who I was as a, a leader due to all the help that she had given me. So I was really grateful and appreciative for that. Thanks. That's, um, that's quite testimonies of giving each other and all well-deserved. Um, okay, I'll wrap this up with a question. And Sarah, I'm going to go out of order, so you're not safe. <laughs> and um, I think I'll actually go, um, we'll keep on with Kai, but, uh, you know, here the three of you are 
players of the year in the conference. Binghamton's had three players of the years in 19 years, um, which has really been successful over many different division levels. Um, Roy, what are each of you uh, most thankful for about being a part of the Binghamton program? And we'll start with you, Kai. Um, I'd say definitely the relationships that I've built. Um, you know, I came in and I didn't know how my experience as a college basketball player would go, um, or even as a student, uh, being so far from home. And I was just hoping to have an enjoyable experience, to, to have good teammates that can make my basketball experience a lot better. And, you know, I've gained, I think, lifelong relationships with, with a lot of the girls that I've played with in the past. Um, they helped me get through a lot of the difficult times that I had, you know, just as a person and, and like my personal life. And then also um, when it came to basketball, because being a student athlete is very, very challenging and being a freshman, it's even more challenging sometimes. So having people to lean on, um, celebrate your successes. We celebrated each other's successes together. Um, it made my experience at Binghamton so much more special. And, and even if I didn't get player of the year, it would have been incredibly special. Um, and I think that's, that's based on a lot of the relationships that I had built um, in my time there. Money? Uh, kind of tell you back enough that that is something that's incredibly special to me. Um, like Kai said, you know, I'm different. So a lot of times stuff like that is, you know, taken, you know, whatever. But I think for me, when you have people on the team that really understand you um, and they understand where you're coming from, um, it kind of makes everything so much better. And I think I've created, you know, lifelong friendships. Um, you know, I had my first real relationship in college. Um, and those are that's the type of things that you, you take and um, you hold on to those to those things, but um, just the community um, environment um, it's, it's special because for me, that was the first time that I'd ever really ventured out. Like I'd never even been to the state of New York before I came to my visit. So um, that was the first time I really got to be, you know, on my own and really kind of make my own way. Um, and, and I think that's, that's a valuable experience. So my four years at Binghamton, you know, ups and downs, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. Okay, Sarah, top that. It's hard to laugh. Um, I mean, I would, I would say the same, similar to what these guys said. Um, I'm, I'm lucky in that I have a few years on them, so I can, I can tell them that you know the the teammates and the friends that you made playing at Binghamton are some of the closest ones you'll ever have. Um, I'm still extremely close with a number of my teammates, been at a lot of weddings, um, you know, and, and just you always have that bond. And I think my experience was a little different in that I was close to home. I was only an hour away from home. So the family atmosphere of being able to have my family um, and and friends around for that experience was great as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, those the sports staff, the coaches, um, the administrators, everyone, the sports information directors, even um, they're a special group and they, you know, it's a, it's a long haul being a student athlete, as Kai said, is not an easy road, but when you have those people that get it and you're in the same boat and you're, you're pulling on the same rope, um, it really makes it for a special, special experience. I'm forever grateful that I was at Binghamton the time that I was there. Um, and you know, it's, it's an honor. And like I said, now that I'm in the coaching world, I, I have a, even more of an, uh, appreciation for how special it was. Just on behalf of everybody listening, um, thank you very, very much for joining us and, um, all the best to you on the other side of this, uh, COVID, um, pandemic. Thank you, David. You thank too. Thank you.